Item 10B is a proposal by Councilman Shadid and Councilman White. Which one of you two wants to take the lead on discussing this with Council? Well, I, I, I made my, my comments in favor, I guess, um, but, well, but a third of the Council wasn't here that day. Um, and Pete asked for it to be on today's today's docket. Uh, uh, Municipal Councilor uh, Jordan suggested that we um, adopt the uh, three public hearings procedure, which was previously adopted for ordinances and is familiar to the council. Um, I think that. Um, the Alliance for Economic Development contract provided an example of what an additional couple of weeks of uh, vetting among the council and with the public um, improvements that could be made uh, to the contract that the city auditor's office didn't get a chance to look at. Uh, and during that two weeks, got to see it and proposed us for an amendment, which was passed. I think, I think the contract was made better over that two weeks. Um, I'm concerned. Um, but in a, a month's time, we've had two far-reaching and broad-ranged contracts, 36 pages and 42 pages in length, that have been um, provided to the council on Friday evening uh, and then expected to be voted on on Tuesday, one of which was on the consent docket. Um, and so it's, I think it's an opportunity for... Uh, more openness, transparency, and council and public deliberation. Uh, it just gives us a sense. It, it, uh, it, it's, it, for, I can only speak for myself. I need that time to go through 42 pages of contract. Um, I, can't, I can't do that in 72 hours, um, especially when a third of the council is gone or when there's a holiday and there's no uh, business day to reach the other council members or staff. Uh, so I, I think that... Um, the, the extra time, I think, is a, uh, is a, is a basic requirement of, of fully vetting these far-reaching and, and broad-ranged contracts. Pete. Uh, I, I support the general, the general concept of this. Um, uh, as I had an opportunity to read it, uh, um, especially over the weekend, I was provided copies as it moved along and did not raise some of the things I'm going to raise this morning about it. Um, I have a little bit, I, uh, not a little bit, I have a concern that it is too, it is too narrowly focused. Um, I, um, I'm not quite sure how I would move to amend it, but I don't believe that it necessarily needs to include an area uh, projects within a certain area because our current situation, which this is modeled after, is for ordinances that are citywide. They have nothing to do with a particular area. So I, I'm, I think it, uh, it sends what I consider to be the wrong message to limit, to, to list the agencies in category two and put the area in in category one. Now, um, I'm, I, I realized that I didn't raise that as you guys, as I was provided copies as it moved along. But the more I think about it, I think that sends a message that's not quite the message that I'm interested in sending. The message I'm interested in is the one that involves when we're going to expend dramatic amounts of money uh, uh, on that we ought to have more than one session to look at it. Since, and since we thought a three-pronged approach on, a, on ordinances is good, where many times that, uh, that just changes the way we do business as opposed to having the expenditure of, of substantial amounts of money, that's where the three-meeting thing came up. It's not, that's not directed it in, in terms of, uh, in my estimation, it's not directed at um, maps or the alliance or trusts or any of that. So I, I have a problem there that it's drawn so narrowly that it, that it leaves the impression that it, it's targeted. And um, I don't, I, I personally don't like those two. Um, 
I don't like the way they're written. And, again, I've had time to look at them more, and the more I look at them, the less I like them. Because if it ought to, I'm being redundant. I'm doing it. I do it every week. I can usually look at Pat, and I can tell when I've done it. But I think it's drawn far too narrowly is my concern about it. I support the concept. If we're going to spend that kind of money doing those kinds of projects, we ought to have more time to look at it. It's just that simple. I don't support narrowing them down the way this proposes to narrowing down to make it appear as it's an anti-MAPS program or an anti-alliance program or an anti-anything. I think it's a pro-council doing their job idea. Okay. David, and then Gary, and then Pat. Thank you. Just a couple of items for clarification for my benefit, because I was not in attendance at the May 17th city council meeting. But the comments reading this over the weekend that struck me was, I would like some clarification. Is this more for the benefit of members of the council to be better prepared to vote on this, or is it more of an emphasis on providing the citizens more access, more time to provide us with their input? Both of them are important, but that's one question I do have to add or repeat concerning this proposal. The other point I'd like to make is both with the idea of the alliance as well as with the Myriad Gardens, in both of those instances, I know I was contacted prior to the week before it was to be presented to the council. So it wasn't just sprung on me over the weekend, for example. I had a lot of opportunity to ask questions and seek input from the individuals who were more involved with this. Having said that, I like the idea, especially as it provides more opportunity to the citizens to provide input. I'm concerned with respect to the three meeting idea, because as we go into the summer schedule, as well as what we've encountered the past month or so with meeting every other week, with meeting on various other items, whether it's finance or the MAPS program or the joint meeting with the planning commission, I could see that take six weeks. So if this could be modified to say a two week time period instead of a three meeting time period, I think I'd be more supportive of that idea. And especially in today's situation where we have access to our members by telephone, by email, if you wanted input, you could go out on the various social media, Facebook, Twitter, and these other forums that I'm not too familiar with. It's not like the turn of the statehood when we had to have 77 counties and it was designed to where someone could get to the county seat within a day's ride on horseback. With today's electronic capabilities, we have access to information as well as our citizens do. So I think a two week time period would certainly satisfy that. And I just would ask that we look at possibly modifying this a little bit from a three meeting perspective to perhaps a two week time frame. Thank you. Okay. Gary? Well, I'm not supportive of this resolution at all, and I'll give you my thoughts why. I'm a little I'm a little concerned that it gives the impression to the public that there's something going wrong here. Something's happening that just cropped up and, you know, is there some subterfuge going on and we need to fix it. And in reality, the system that we've been using has worked very well for years and years and years. The two things that have drove this conversation, the alliance and the Mary Gardens Foundation issue, were not just sprung overnight. They were discussed in advance. We were all briefed on the generalities of what was going to happen. 
you may not have seen the actual document to the week before, but at some point the council has to put its trust in a staff that they take the negotiations and they put together a document and bring it forward for your review. Now, if you don't, if you have questions or you want to change something or you don't like what's in that document once you see it, I've never known that we haven't deferred it when it's been requested and deferred it multiple weeks if we need to hash it out, which we have done. And there's nothing wrong with that. I don't have a problem with deferring anything that a council member doesn't feel comfortable voting on if they have a reason that they saw something in the contract or whatever. Just to talk about the sheer magnitude of contracts, I don't think you want to look at a contract for a fire truck. Forty pages would be a short contract for a fire truck, probably. And you spend millions of dollars on fire trucks every year. Now, where do we draw the line when we just say contracts? Because you're spending a lot of city dollars every week up here on contracts, and I would imagine if you actually pull the document, those contracts are very wieldy and lengthy. So why are we pulling these particular ones out? So I have a problem with not only the geographic area part of it, but the naming of different organizations that we're going to do this on. I think it puts an unwieldy burden on staff in the attempt to fix something that's not broken. And I just don't, I just have a concern that we're sending a message that there's been something wrong, we've done something wrong, we're trying to make some backdoor deals going on, and this is the way to fix it and get it more open. And that is absolutely not the truth in my opinion. And I just can't support this at all. All right. Pat? Thank you, Your Honor. I agree a lot with what Gary said and what Councilman White said about the categories here being strained. It calls for supervision of contracts issued into by the Economic Development Trust. How about the other trust that he, Water Utilities Trust, enters into contracts that far exceed any dollar amount that we've talked about in the council on my being, absent maybe the entire budget. And so the fact that it limits that is there is an implication in my mind anyway that there's somebody who suspects the Economic Development Trust was doing things that were improper. That is not the case at all. Secondly, there is a clear avenue to do exactly what Councilman Deed wants to do without adopting the resolution. That's to ask for a deferral and get all the explanation you care for. We get the contract, but as Councilman, excuse me, Mars pointed out, almost every time we have something of controversy or magnitude, there's been discussion. Now, that may have occurred before you were elected, Councilman Deed, but there was discussion on the issues you talked about, you had exceptions about. But it wasn't the first time the concept was introduced to the council. And the council's job is not to write contracts, it's to approve policy. And I think that's my final objection is you're asking the staff to do an awful lot of work so the city council can write contracts. I don't think that's our job. Other than the two attorneys we have on the council, it's probably well beyond our limited experience in education. I am opposed to this ordinance. I think it's unnecessary. It creates a feeling among some of our citizens, or could create, that there had been improper things done in city council. I don't think that's it. All right. Meg and then Pete. And I guess if I could, Pete, I need to thank you for kind of raising your initial comments. I really appreciate your remarks. Because in all fairness, when you read this document, it's very Ward 6 centric. There are at least three categories that specifically relate to any project in Ward 6. Port Ashore is all in Ward 6. Five of the eight MAPS projects, Ward 6. The definition of near downtown, from 10th Street to the river, from Western to Lincoln, essentially Ward 6. Most of the projects that we're working with with those various named organizations, Ward 6. I think there's a real problem with that. And I am very much opposed to the resolution for that reason. And also for the fact that we have a process in place, as several of the other council members have said. We have an ability to defer any document that we want to. And I don't see the system as broken. And I don't see any reason to fix it with something that's this place specific. Pete? I have two comments. One is 
With regard to the idea that things, that all this was, these two things that generated this were thoroughly vetted beforehand, they may have been vetted with the other eight of you, but they weren't vetted with me. I assumed that the alliance was going to be what I thought it was, what I had been told it was going to be. I assumed it was an in-house operation. I assumed it was not going to go outside. I had no idea that it was going to be done the way it was until I saw that. Now, that may be my fault, and if it is my fault, I would admit that it is my fault. If all of you already knew that, that it was going to be exactly what it was, an outside operation totally, I voted for it. So don't misunderstand my total, my lack of commitment to the idea, but I was floored by the fact that it was not what I had understood it to be beforehand. So I think that needs to be said. Maybe you all may be much more perceptive than I am. But the second thing is, all these arguments that we're talking about that are opposed to this could be made against the three-tiered deal on ordinances, every one of them. And we didn't make those then. We thought that was a good idea to give the public more opportunity to find out more about it. And it hasn't proven to be a problem. The problem I see with these kinds of projects is they tend to be, you've got to do it now. You're made to feel like you're anti-Oklahoma City if you want a continuance. So the idea that you can always get a continuance, there was two weeks ago, it wasn't a unanimous vote for a continuance. So it's not always a lead pipe sense that things are going to be continued. Just two weeks ago, we had an important item that the vote was not unanimous for a continuance. So what that means is each individual, as we should, can make up our own mind whether the continuance is appropriate or not. And I think that's a mistake. I think this is, I have already said what I think about the two categories, as Meg pointed out. I don't like those. I think they could, I think it must be, it must be changed to be broader than it is and not focused specifically to give the appearance of being something that I am not supportive of. But to say that there's something wrong with it because it's a three-tiered thing, that's what the ordinance, that's what the ordinance deferral thing is. To say that it's, that we all knew what was getting ready to happen, we were all briefed. Well, maybe all the rest of you were, but I wasn't. So that's what I'm trying to avoid. I do think we have a problem. I do think we have a problem when items of this gravity are given to us and we're expected because of all kinds, there's always some kind of a reason that makes it an emergency that we need to do it now. I mean, you can look at my personal record. I vote for them. But I vote for them after I've had a chance to convince myself and deal with my constituency who, frankly, in many cases are not for most of these things. This is not, this is not a, from my standpoint, this is not an effort to try to make it more difficult. It's an effort to try to make it more transparent and more open. Everybody's going to vote however they want to, but again, but I, it's not an effort on my part to do anything other than make it more transparent and give more opportunity to do it and relieve us of this pressure that you're some kind of a communist if you can't agree to do it today when you've only seen it for 48 hours. I just have a question, and I'm not trying to be argumentative, Pete, but I don't have a problem with the three-meeting deal. I didn't have a problem when we did it for ordinances. But where do you draw the line when you talk about contracts? Because how many contracts do we deal with weekly? And how many of them are major, huge, multi-million dollar contracts? And do we just say we want the three hearings for every contract that expends city dollars? I'm just, I'm at a loss to figure out where you draw the line when you start talking about three hearings on contracts, I guess is my problem. Gary, I agree with that. I think that wording is too broad. Why, I think in an effort to test this idea that everybody gets continuances if they want them, I'm going to move this to be continued for four weeks and give ourselves an opportunity to try to clean this up a little bit. I don't believe there's a meeting in four weeks. Whenever there's a meeting. You've got three or five. Five weeks. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, counsel. Case is submitted.
plenty of time to everybody weigh in on it and have an opportunity to try to clean this up. I do think Gary makes a good point. It cannot just say contracts. It is not intended to deal with the painting contracts that we agreed to, that we talked about today. It's not intended to deal with those kinds of things. I just wanted to be clear on that. It doesn't deal with equipment contracts or painting contracts. It would be a contract for the lease management or redevelopment by a public or private entity of real property owned by the city or a city trust or public park property. It wouldn't apply to like a purchase of a fire engine or anything like that. That makes the point earlier. This thing was sprung on seven of you just over the weekend. You've only had just a few days to look at it. It just sprung on you. And so why don't we continue it and give ourselves an opportunity to deal with it. And that makes the point that all you need to do is continue it. You don't need to have three hearings. You can just defer it for as long as you need. I mean, I think I personally have vetted concerns I have about it today. And the rest of you do have. And I think those concerns can be dealt with. And it can still be done in such a way that there is some time given to reflect and deal with the problem, what I consider to be a problem. Well, if the resolution just said that. This case points it out exactly. It's just way too much to expect us to do over a weekend. Well, if the resolution just did that, then it might be acceptable. But it goes well beyond that. And I would hope that the municipal counselor will redraft something that is much clearer and doesn't go in so far. One of the parts that I objected to that we haven't talked about yet was the requirement that the city manager make a report monthly on what he's been doing. And I think that's an administrative burden that we don't have to put on him because he, I'm sure, does a lot of things that never get beyond a telephone conversation. And I don't want to hear about those. Absolutely. And so I think that was a piece in there that I think we should not have gotten. My motion is over. Did you want to talk? Yeah. I just wanted to point out that the advance notice was in response to Councilman Shadid's request that council be provided with notice of what's going to be brought to them of these types of items. Is my motion in order? To defer to July 5th. To July 5th. Yeah. We can all wear little flags and be the day after the 4th of July and fight for freedom. Would you object to the next setting after July the 5th because a lot of us are going to be gone on the 4th and some of us may not get back on the 5th in time? The 19th? I don't think we're going to have that. Well, I don't know why not. I don't know why not. I mean, I'm interested in trying to work something out. This is not a, this is not a, I certainly wouldn't want anybody to consider, to feel like they've been rushed in to vote for something. All right. Skip, do you have anything else you want to add? Well, much of what was being said, I wanted to echo on the issue of just identifying two areas that's named in the, in this proposal, this resolution, proposed resolution. You know, I think that a lot of times, you know, the staff and the briefing that could be done, I think there's some times where I feel like that's been shortened in reference to information given to the council. But at the same time, I still think that we have probably one of the best staffs that you could probably find to run and operate a city. But I realize that there's been some situations that obviously sometimes they feel like time is more of the essence than we as councilmen, some of us as councilmen feel like time should be of the essence in order to give us a lot more information to be able to answer. And a lot of times the answers come from, the questions come from constituents as to why did y'all do that and why did y'all do that. And sometimes you are kind of short as far as information that have not been clearly vented in reference to some of the briefings. But I think that the briefing sessions could be a little bit more in-depth. I think they could be a little bit more timely. And maybe we wouldn't have to be, you know, debating this issue of three public hearings. But if that's the case, I don't think we should discriminate between one part of the city's operations and another part of the city operations. If we're going to change the whole policy as it relates to, you know, these hearings, then let's make it universal towards everything. All right. Any other comments or questions on this item before we consider the deferral request by Councilman White? All right. Thank you, Council. Thank you. Thank you.
All right. Pete, was that a motion for defer it until July 19th? All right. Second. Second. Comments or questions on the deferral? All right. Cast your votes on the deferral. That item is deferred. Okay. Was it unanimous? 9-0? All right. Item 11 is city.